Today on the Bowie Youth Showcase, we will give our viewers a glimpse into the world of literature and music theory and how they coexist with education. Stay tuned, we will be right back with our guest. Hello and welcome to the Bowie Youth Showcase. I'm your host, Kasara Clay. On today's show, we are speaking with new author Sierra Pugh and she will give us her insight on literature and how it affects education. And Johnny Walker Jr., a talented cellist who will discuss music theory and how it's tied to education. At the end of the show, Johnny will grace us with a live performance. Thank you for being here, Sierra. Thank you for having me. <laughs> okay, before we start talking about your book, uh, The Veiled Truth, you decided to go with a different name, uh, Andrea Rose Washington. And can you tell me why you decided to use a different name, go by a different name in the literary world? Um, it, took a it took a little bit of time to get to that idea. At first, I was going to publish under Sierra Pugh, but then I started to realize in the whole writing world, that's a whole different side of me. That's a whole different person. That's a whole different entity in okay. itself. And so I wanted to give it its own name. Okay. And so I decided to go with my middle name, which was Andrea. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to pay homage to my mom, whose last, whose maiden name is Washington. Okay. And so I went with Andrea Washington, and I felt like it was missing something. Mm -hmm. And then I really like Rose. So I just decided to say, OK, we're going to go with Andrea Rose Washington okay. as my name. OK, so it's sentimental as well. Yes. Very sweet. But I felt like it, f it fits the type of writing that I'm going to try to accomplish in my lifetime. OK, so what inspired you to write this book? Uh, I've always loved to write. It's been a part of my life forever. But um, that moment that I said, okay, Sierra, you're going to write a book, it was actually sort of a sad story. I was on the way home from college to come home for my grandmother's funeral, and she died a week before my 20th birthday. Sorry to hear that. Thank you. Um, and I was on the train, and I was really upset, and I just needed something to do. So I started to write. And then it was in that moment where I started to decide, okay, Sierra, you want to write for the rest of your life, but you need to actually get there and say, I'm not going to publish a book. I'm going to do it. I'm going to publish this. Okay. And so on the train, I had my portfolio that I got when I was a Girl Scout, and I had this pen that I got from my church. It had my name engraved in it, and it just seemed like everything was saying, Sierra, go ahead. Okay, so it was a writer. sign. It was a sign. It was perfect. It was a sign to saying, this is the moment you're going to decide to write a book. Okay. And it was on the train coming home from college to come to my grandmother's funeral where I decided, I'm going to publish a book. Mm -hmm. I didn't know when, but it was in that moment I was going to start writing. Okay. Can you tell me about this cover? It's beautiful, by the way. Thank you. It was actually from a site, I want to say Shutter, Shutter Shock, um, where you could basically buy the rights to use a photo. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea of it is I wanted a castle in the background, and I wanted it to be sort of hidden and foggy. I wanted it to be somewhere you could see it, but you didn't understand why it was so, like, why it was also hidden away from okay. you. So. Um, I searched and I searched. I looked for different artists, and they. I've, I've been told that this was like one of the best photos I could find. And then I just sort of saw it and I thought about it, and I kept coming back to it. Like I would look at other photos, but it was always right. came back to this one because mm -hmm. it was like this just embodied everything I wanted. I wanted that part of the castle where you couldn't see everything because it plays okay. on the title of the Velt Truth. So like okay. it's hidden. Mm -hmm. You couldn't. You could see a glimpse of it, but you didn't really understand everything that was going on. Besides the title, does this cover tie into the book as well? Yes, it does. Um, part of the book has to do with royalty, mm -hmm. and you don't understand why royalty is a part of it at the mm -hmm. moment. And the first book, it sort of hints to the royalties okay. involved. And so that's why I wanted to go at the castle, because it shows the bigger picture of everything that's to be tied into it. So with this cover, is going to be, um, with this cover, is just going to be you see the royalty, you know it's there, you just don't understand why it's there. And I wanted the cover to play onto that, the okay. hidden picture. Um, I actually got okay. to read a snippet of your book, and it seems like there is a strong female character. Have you always been drawn to books with strong female characters? Yes, I have. Whether they are the main character or not, I have okay. been. And one popular reference for me would probably be the Harry Potter series okay. with Hermione Granger. I <laughs> am in love with this girl. Mm -hmm. I actually had a friend in high school who wrote her entire thesis paper that we had to do for, we had to write our thesis paper in high school, and mm -hmm. hers was on why Hermione Granger was a true hero <laughs> of Harry Potter. Um, but there's a lot of stories where, besides Harry Potter, you have, um, with the City of Bones, mm -hmm. you have the strong female character who's like, okay, 
I'm going to do this. No one's going to stop me. No one's going to block me from going down okay. the path. And I just love that. I just love to where you could show a woman doing something that needed to be done without having to worry and to rely on other people to do it for her. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that this, um, these strong characters, this strong female character, does she send a message to your young readers? I want to say she sends a message of never giving up. Because okay. just because of your age, just because of where you are in life, just because you, things might be thrown against you and have you hidden or have you um, pushed down does not mean you cannot accomplish what you want. It means you, you can still rise above everything. Okay. Do you feel that um, you embody your female character in some way? Uh, yes. Yeah, Sasha is a part of my life. She <laughs> is. Um, she honestly is a a version of myself that I wish would have happened, which okay. is, I guess it's sort of weird, but I love it. It's, everyone has that, oh, I wish my life would have went this way. I okay. wish this is how the world was. And this is one subsection of my brain that says, yeah, this would be an awesome thing okay. to happen. So you're kind of living through your character. Yes, I'm vicariously okay. living through my, <laughs> <laughs> through my character, Sasha. <laughs> how long did it take for this um, book to come to life? Um, about four years. Cause I, uh, 2010 was when I came home from my grandmother's funeral, okay. and I published it April of 2014. Um, and in that time, there was four different versions of the story. So each year, I came up with a different version before I settled on one that was like, oh, I really like that. Mm -hmm. This is what I want to give the world. Okay. And I, I want to tell our viewers that this isn't just uh, one book. It's part of a series. So can you tell me a little bit about the series? Um, with the series, you'll be following Sasha, and you'll be following basically every part of the story. You have uh, the royal family, you'll be following her mother, you'll be following her father, you'll be mm -hmm. following herself, just, and you're getting a multi-person um, point of view of the story. Okay. And the, uh, the basis of each story, what you're really trying to figure out is what is the huge secret that someone is willing to kill okay. her for. Okay. And so that's, in each book, you're finding out a little more about Sasha's life, you're finding out a little more about okay. her family's history, you're finding out a little more of, just what the world was built on. Okay, so each book is one person's point of view. No, each each um, each book has multiple points of view. Okay. So okay. in each book, you're following, you're getting a full rounded version of the story. Okay. Well, what went into the writing process for you? At first, it was the outline. It was um, okay. Just sitting down and actually figuring out what was it that I wanted to write. Mm -hmm. I had I always had the base idea of what would you do if you. But one day you just didn't have your parents to take care of you anymore. Like you were on this journey where you okay. had to figure, like your parents were taken from you and you needed to figure out why and you had to find them and you had to save them. Like it was your, the child's job to save the parent for once. Mm -hmm. And I've always wanted to know what would happen. And so I took that idea and I wrote down five or six ideas of where it could go, different plot lines. And with each outline, which is probably about 10 different outlines for this book, I worked out each and everything like where was Sasha going to go okay. who was she going to meet and then um then it went to reading blogs okay. and it went to reading uh books on plot structure and characters and forming the settings it went on books on how to write com complete novels in 90 days mm -hmm. it was um a lot of research before I can ever actually got to writing the first chapter out how did you decide uh, which plot which plot to go with um I would let some of my friends read it. Okay. Uh, I I took feedback early on. I um, would just go ahead and like write a couple chapters out, like freehand. It was maybe each chapter was like a page of loose leaf, and like okay. this is what I'm thinking okay. about. And they were like, well, this isn't really believable, even in a book setting, or or like this has been done before, or this has played out. Okay. And I took their advice, and I just kept going. I kept reworking it because I okay. wanted to make something original. I wanted to make it my own. Okay. And so that's where I settled on this one because I. Gave, when I finally finished like the third whole version of it, the whole draft, I sent it out to like three or four people and they all read it and they all was like, well, I like it, but you're missing something. So you got feedback from it. Yes. Okay, so when did you start writing, first start writing, and when did you, for, when you decided to take it seriously and become an author when you had that moment after your grandmother passed away and it was just everything fell into place, but when did you first start writing? I wanna say seventh grade. Mm -hmm. um, I was really into anime at this time, and me and my, <laughs> it's very weird, but um, me and my friend Chioma, we would watch 
like in the Asha, the show in the Asha religiously every weekend, and then we couldn't stay up, we would record it. And by a little bit into it, we're just like, man, the story isn't really going the way we want it to go. And so we decided we're going to write our own version of the show. And then we found out there's this thing out there where people do that. And so we would read other people's stories and we were like, oh, no, we could do it better. So we would go out and we would rewrite our stories. And that's mm -hmm. how I got into actually writing. Before then, I loved to read. And then it wasn't until I was probably about high school, college age right. that, where I decided to say, you know what? I want to do this for the rest of my life. And I want to be an author, but I always put it on the back burner a little okay. bit. Well, what advice would you give to young authors coming up? Um, never give up. Like, writing a book is not as easy as it seems. Right. It's a very hard process. There are going to be times where you're just upset with yourself because you can't think of an idea or you can't figure something out. Just don't give up because it is a hard process, but the end result the reward of knowing you wrote this book mm -hmm. and then like just seeing the joy in other people's faces when they're reading it is it's all worth it. It's all worth it in the end. I understand. Well, thank you so much, Sierra, for sharing with us your book, The Veiled Truth. Up next, we have cellist Johnny Walker. Stay tuned. Oh. <laughs>